Hi, it's Dwyer. May 1st, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Before I go further, let me give a shout out to two gamblers, Brian and Rafe. I've heard of you guys. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Let's talk boxing. There is talk out there of a rearrangement in the schedule in the heavyweight division. You've heard that Deontay Wilder has an injured arm. It's a major injury. It's a bicep, which is big when you're a boxer. Right? Apparently, that third fight with Tyson Fury has been continued indefinitely. So there's talk about him hopping in the ring next against Anthony Joshua. Now Joshua has a match coming up against Kubrat Pulev. That's a very important match. Kubrat Pulev has one of the best jabs in the heavyweight division. More importantly, he knows how to use it. Right? People like Bob Arum. And I understand Bob has a dog in the fight, right? He's backing Kubrat Pulev. He's involved in Pulev's career. I get it. But I'm just telling you there's a group out there. Bob Arum's among them. Who question Anthony Joshua and who believe that he's not going to know what to do against a guy with a very good jab who's going to be able to keep him busy while being out of harm's way. Right? Let's remember. Anthony Joshua knocked down by Vladimir Klitschko. Let's remember. Anthony Joshua knocked down several times by Andy Ruiz. Right? Understand the official record of head-to-head -head matchups Anthony Joshua, Andy Ruiz, stands at one win apiece. Right, so there is the feeling out there that when Joshua goes up against KG veterans, skilled veterans, guys like Kubrat Pulev who fought Vladimir Klitschko when Vladimir Klitschko was champ, didn't win, got his first loss, let's understand that's his only loss. Recently, Pulev beat Yui Fury, right? A guy who moves better than Joshua. There's a feeling that Kubrat Pulev, who's been in the ring with a lot of contenders, is going to give Joshua all he can handle. But let's also be clear here, and I know in the United States we're not fully aware of it. But Anthony Joshua remains the box office king, in my opinion at least, in the heavyweight division. Just look at the numbers from his fights, both in the UK, right? His fight against Vladimir Klitschko, his fight against Joseph Parker, as well as the pay-per-view numbers generated in the UK for his rematch outside the country against Andy Ruiz. He's a box office draw. This is the entertainment business. The sport has to recognize that Anthony Joshua is a draw at least on the level of Canelo. Let me also say, too, that the world doesn't revolve around the United States, right? The situation in the heavyweight division right now in the United Kingdom is historical. You look at the heavyweight division, an argument can be made that the two best fighters in the heavyweight division right now are both from the U.K., 
right? And of those two, Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua, of those two, Joshua is clearly the person with more box office draw. Looking at his history too, Olympic gold medalist, right? He comes to boxing late, but he's the Olympic gold medalist. Let's face it too. He's out of central casting. He looks like a professional athlete, right? When I was growing up, we had a great heavyweight champion. He was great, folks. Larry Holmes, but Larry didn't look physically imposing. Anthony Joshua, it's hard to find any body fat on him. He looks like he's straight out of the gym. He also is a guy who clearly devotes a portion of his time to thinking about how to be inspirational to others. So even a cynic like me, a libertarian guy like me, a guy like me whose favorite fighter ever is Jack Johnson, right? A guy like me who worships Muhammad Ali, right? Even a guy like me was struck when after he beats Joseph Parker, Joshua made sure that he spent a portion of his post-fight interview talking about the need for unity, right? He's a guy who you would expect to see in a movie, right? The WWE, the wrestling outfit here in the United States, always tries to have a good guy, right, as the champion. You might remember back to Bob Backlund, Right? There's always that guy who, you know, he's a champ, he might have some swag, but you know he's a good guy. Right? He's not, you know, one of these crazy guys off in the distance that the WWE has. Right? They always have a guy who you, you feel, okay, well, this guy gets it. Right? He, he represents the outfit. He represents the fans. That's Anthony Joshua in real life. Now all of that said, right? This is a gambling site. We call it as it is. If Tyson Fury fights Anthony Joshua, I'm rolling with Tyson Fury big time. I don't believe the fight is that close. Right? Understand, talent, you know, popularity, you have to concede the popularity of Anthony Joshua. Right? Certain fighters, Canelo, Manny Pacquiao, when they enter the ring, they bring the crowd with them. That's who Anthony Joshua is. But this is a sport where talent matters. Right? Life's unfair. You can want to be able to throw 95 miles an hour. Somebody else could be out partying late at night, hanging out. And then when you get to the stadium, the guy who's partying because he's talented is able to throw 95 miles an hour. And you, even though you've studied hard, even though you've read books, even though you've watched others, can't do it. That's boxing. Whatever Tyson Fury's issues have been in the past, and I understand he's had weight issues, health issues, all right, all right, right? PEDs, according to some reports, uh, he himself admits to having had a drug problem. Okay, okay, you know, but, in my opinion, he's far too fluid, far too fluid for Anthony Joshua, right? He's so fluid that when he faints, opponents 
have to fear the faint because they know his jab is that precise. So in boxing, you look at a match and you'll be thinking to yourself, wow, you know, Vladimir Klitschko is having an off night. Why can't Vladimir Klitschko just jump in on Tyson Fury? And then you realize Fury's just too fast and has a construct where his feints are keeping Vladimir Klitschko outside. The timing is a problem because Fury can go off cadence. He's not robotic, right? He's a jazz guy, right? Think Charlie Parker. Think John Coltrane. He can go off rhythm. He's going to keep you off rhythm. You don't know whether the feint is a real punch. When he throws the real punch, he might end up hitting you clean, throwing you off. You know, Vladimir Klitschko had some car crashes. He had some bad fights. The Corey Sanders fights, probably his worst fight. He gets blown out early. Right? But understand, the Ross Purity fight, as I said in an earlier video, Klitschko's dominating that fight before he runs out of gas. The Lehman Brewster fight, and I have that fight in my favorites folder here. That first Lehman Brewster fight, people seem to have forgotten it. Klitschko is tired. I want you to look at the picture that they've put on top of the video. You'll notice that before Klitschko falls down on the canvas, at the end of the round where the ref calls it, the ref's actually trying to hold him up. Look at the referee's hand in that photo. That's how finished Klitschko is. But to me, those films aren't as devastating. They're just not as devastating as the footage from the Tyson Fury fight. Understand, that's a classic deconstruction of a reigning champion. Fury is, sta is standing in front of Klitschko, is moving. And Vladimir Klitschko, he's not dazed and confused. He's not, hasn't been hit with bombs like in the Corey Sanders fight. He's not tired. What Vladimir Klitschko is, is baffled. He cannot get Tyson Fury's timing. Right? Fury's off beat. Fury's moving. Fury's fainting. Fury is fluid. You understand, when Fury's throwing punches, they're pinpoint. You understand, when he's not throwing punches, but he's Fainting, pretending like he's going to throw a punch, you have to cover up his feet are such that when you come forward, he can go backward. I know in the ring, it looks effortless. No, no, that's, that's the sport at the highest level. A guy has your timing completely off. You, you can't even get the spacing. Meanwhile, he's able to hit you with jabs and then move away. Right? Tyson Fury understood that his game plan was going to throw off Vladimir Klitschko. Where are you in preparing for a fight going to find a 6'9 guy? who's as fluid as Tyson Fury and who moves as well as Tyson Fury. Understand too that Tyson Fury is much better 
I mean much better, on his back foot than Anthony Joshua. I know Joshua was on his back foot against Andy Ruiz, right? Can we agree that Andy Ruiz, still in my opinion, the fastest hands in the heavyweight division? I'm looking forward to seeing what Canelo's trainer, who's one of the best in the sport, is going to do with Andy. But Andy doesn't move well. That's his Achilles heel. So against a very slow-moving Andy Ruiz, Anthony Joshua was able to back up, move around the ring for most of that fight. Now, let me just say this. Right? Understand the guys who move can also change direction quickly. The elite fighters. And can actually segue onto their front foot. Right? Revisit Ali against Zora Fali. Revisit Ali against Cleveland Williams. Revisit Ali against Ernie Terrell. Right? Anthony Joshua isn't accustomed to prioritizing his back foot and movement. That's not his game. Right? Tyson Fury, by contrast, is a fighter who has a back foot and a front foot. Fury has spent years of his life. Years. Developing a multiplicity of skills. So he's much farther along in his skill set and his use of things like a back foot. Changing movement. Right? Jumping inside. He's much farther along than Anthony Joshua. What I want people to realize is that the first Fury Wilder fight was Fury's third fight back into his comeback. His third. Let's remember too that like Ray Leonard, Fury was coming back from a multi-year absence from the brain. Multi-year. One where he had ballooned in weight. Google. Fury's weight history here online. And yet, in his third fight back against an unbeaten multi-year reigning heavyweight champion, he was able to dance away from Deontay Wilder to the point where Wilder doesn't catch up with him until the ninth round. The ninth round. His movement then, and I'm just telling you, his movement's a lot better now. Practice makes perfect. Right? The NFL has a preseason. Baseball has spring training. For a reason. Right? Fury is now in midseason form. He wasn't for that first Wilder fight. As it is, I thought he dominated that Wilder fight. The judge is going into the 12th round. Had Tyson Fury, a guy in his third fight back, ahead on the scorecards, entering the 12th round of that fight. Now that level of movement, and you're not going to see it from Kubrat Pulev either. Right, understand, Fury's movement in the ring, his movement, is the best in the heavyweight division. Right? His brother, Yui, moves well, has great footwork, but doesn't have the gear that Tyson has to then just step deep into the pocket. Let me say this, too. Joshua, blessed puncher, I'm more impressed with Joshua's power than I am Deontay Wilder's. Punchers are born, they're not made. 
right? I know old timers are going to say, didn't Archie Moore develop power later? Okay, that's an outlier. Right? I'll just say this. You know, I look at Joshua's power and it reminds me of George Foreman's power. Right? Tyson had two handed power, but he was quick and explosive. Right? Tyson, you know, was a quick thing. With punchers like Foreman and Joshua, the punch can look slow. It wrecks havoc. You notice the opponent is hit and is hurt. You know, Foreman during his comeback fought Dwight Cowie, a great fighter. And after the fight, Cowie gave an interview, right? You know, Foreman at the time was viewed as a gimmick because Foreman had been out of the ring for years. Then started a comeback later in life. And one of the first things Dwight Cowie said, they said, hey, do you think Foreman <laughs> would have a chance on Mike Tyson? This is years ago. And Cowie said, well... He certainly has the punching power, was basically the way Dwight put it, right? He hits hard enough, that's for sure. Words to that effect. That's Anthony Joshua. I think Deontay Wilder has a great punch, a long right hand. That's different than Joshua, who's a blessed puncher, who hits you hard with everything, long, short, everything. You want to see a guy who felt Joshua's power? What I want you to do is to look at Dylan White after he gets dropped. Right, Dylan White looks like he's been in a car crash, folks. Right? I'll agree that Dominique Brazil is out cold against Deontay Wilder long right hand. I guess Wilder steps into it. It's not that long a right hand, but it starts out long, right? But wow, is that more impressive where a guy gets his lights turned off than the beaten up Deontay, excuse me, Dominique Brazil at the end of the Joshua fight? I've watched many Alexander Povetkin fights. I thought Povetkin's movement, this is a harbinger, of what I'm expecting from Fury Joshua. I thought Povetkin's movement gave Joshua fits. And understand, Povetkin is a guy who got knocked down by Vladimir Klitschko, but who gets up, is able to complete that fight against Vladimir Klitschko. Vladimir's the one holding on to him. He wasn't able to complete the fight against Anthony Joshua. Right? Povetkin, a guy who takes a punch. A guy who will hit the canvas and then get off the canvas and continue fighting. Could not continue fighting against Anthony Joshua. I understand with Joshua, there's a thin margin of error. No question about it. But understand, Tyson Fury can win rounds from the outside without looking like he's running. He'll win rounds by using lateral movement. Understand, Tyson Fury doesn't have to get close enough to Anthony Joshua to allow Anthony Joshua to clinch him like Joshua was clinching Andy Ruiz in the rematch. Right? Joshua would throw punches, be on the move, then would clinch Andy when Andy came in close. What happens if he's fighting a bigger fighter who won't allow himself to get clinched? Worse yet, what happens if he's fighting a bigger fighter who's actually better than Joshua on the inside? Let me say too, Joshua's jab it's a stiff jab. He's working at it. It's getting there. It takes time to develop your skills. Right? As I like to remind people, Vladimir Klitschko took years to develop his skills. Right? Wins the Olympic gold medal in 96. 
gets drilled by Corey Sanders in, I believe, 2003. Gets drilled by Lehman Brewster in 2004. Right? It, it took Vladimir Klitschko years. But here's what you need to consider. Against a guy like Fury, with Fury's mobility, Anthony Joshua's jab is going to be completely negated. Let's go one step further. I call Joshua clunky. You've heard me here in other videos say he's clunky. He's actually going to be the smaller man against Tyson Fury, right? Fury enters the rematch against Deontay Wilder weighing over 270 pounds. But you understand there's a coordination gap between the two guys. Right? Fury moves extremely well. As I said, he's fluid. Right? Joshua won't be able to move with him. More importantly, Fury, with a great jab and movement, can lead. In other words, Fury can be outside and he can stick a jab in your face and just move around the outside. The fight's not going to start until you figure out how to deal with Fury's length and movement. Right? When exactly did his fight against Vladimir Klitschko, where he wins the title, start? Don't you go through several rounds of that fight, several rounds, where Klitschko's doing next to nothing. When did Fury's fight, the first fight, against Deontay Wilder start? Don't you go through several rounds where Wilder is doing next to nothing? Now Joshua, as big a puncher as he is, right? You've heard of the term counterpunch. I consider Joshua to be a counterattacker. Right? He needs for you to engage him, doesn't he? He needs for you to engage him. And then he's there with a counterattack. Well, that's exactly the kind of fighter who's going to be thrown off his game by a mobile Tyson Fury. Right? Tyson Fury is a lot like... Young Ali, right? Tyson Fury, knocked down by Steve Cunningham. Ali, knocked down by Sonny Banks, knocked down by Henry Cooper. I'm not here to say that Tyson Fury's chin is bulletproof. Understand, though, neither of these guys' chins is bulletproof. Right? Neither of them is bulletproof. Let me also say, too, that you've had big guys who hunt, right? You knew you were on the clock with George Foreman. You knew you were on the clock with Mike Tyson. These were guys with punches who were there to find you early, right? If Tyson Fury fought the guy he was named after, Mike Tyson, there wouldn't be the eight, nine rounds where Fury's just outside popping a jab and Prime Tyson, not Buster Douglas Tyson, but Prime Tyson, is giving him space. Like Klitschko and Wilder, two guys with big punches did. Right? Understand, George Foreman, just look at the Kenny Norton fight. You want another great George Foreman fight? Foreman's on the canvas against Ron Lyle, guys. He then gets off the canvas. Right? Foreman's action. Foreman Jimmy Young, a fight he lost, at least they say he lost. You're going to notice Foreman, <laughs> Foreman is going up to Young and using roughhouse tactics. Right? Foreman's walking over to Young and pushing him and stuff like that. That's not Anthony Joshua. Joshua is a big guy, but Joshua is a cautious guy. 
Right? He, he doesn't come find you like Vitaly Klitschko. He's a guy who liked Vladimir Klitschko. And that's the historical analog to me. At least to me. I think Anthony Joshua, I think Vladimir Klitschko. Both huge punchers. Both patient guys who wanted to do a one-two on you. Wanted to soften you up with the jab. And then, as you're tiring and stuff like that, then they start to open up on you. Right? Well, Tyson Fury's already fought Vladimir Klitschko. We saw how that fight turned out. Why do you think this fight is going to turn out any different? Let me say this too. You know, talent's also a curse. Anthony Joshua is so accustomed to knocking guys out. He's so accustomed to being the big puncher in the ring who eventually is able to land. That in that first Andy Ruiz fight, you notice that when he was dealing with Andy after Andy gets off the canvas, you notice when Joshua goes over there and starts to open up, his defense wasn't that good. He got hit on the side of the head. By the way, this is just two fights ago, folks. I would argue this is current Anthony Joshua. You notice he got hit on the side of the head, he goes down. When he gets off the canvas, his survival skills weren't the best. In the seventh round, where is he in the ring? Look at the film. He's over by the ropes. Right? You didn't get the feeling that this guy had been through a lot of adversity in the past. I would argue that by contrast, you look at the fight in which, quite frankly, Tyson Fury should have lost his unbeaten record. In fact, let's go further. I know there's a John McDermott crowd out there. Okay, I hear you clearly. That fight is razor close. Right? That's Tyson Fury's Castillo fight. Right? If you remember the Floyd Mayweather legacy. Right? That's Tyson Fury's Roland Lestarza fight. Okay, fair enough. Fair enough. But in the Otto Wallen fight, Fury's bleeding profusely. He has a young guy in front of him who's a bit of an athlete. Right? Valen's stamina is never really questioned in that fight. And you notice that Fury was able to come inside in the middle of a fight that he starts on his back foot. Fury makes the adjustment and realizes he has to hide the cut. He spends a lot of that fight with that cut close to Valen. He wants it to be so close that Valen can't hit it. He completely changes the angles. It's like it's two guys in there. The Tyson Fury before the cut and the Tyson Fury after the cut. I just don't think Anthony Joshua has that level of versatility in his game. So I know I've taken heat here online. Fair enough. People feel I'm biased against Anthony Joshua. Fair enough. Right? Everyone has a story... You know, supposedly Deontay Wilder dodged Anthony Joshua, right? I guess I'm going to hear Tyson Fury's dodging Anthony Joshua. Um, the bottom line, the bottom line is that today, I feel that Tyson Fury is the more complete fighter, right? I think Fury is a victim. of his own excesses in the past. I think people understand that he beat Vladimir Klitschko years ago. Right? A fighter's prime only lasts for a certain period of time. In interviews, Fury jokes a lot. He wears colorful clothing. Right? He, he doesn't seem serious. 
Folks, he is the most serious man in the sport outside of Terence Crawford. You just don't get to this skill level. Right? He's ambidextrous. That's the other thing, too. He can change the angles on Joshua. If he goes lefty on Joshua, Joshua won't be able to land his jab. I'm just telling you. Right? Like Crawford, you, you look at guys. It's just like if someone walks in the room and they speak five languages. You understand, my God, this guy has been a student. That's who Tyson Fury is. I don't consider the fight to be a close fight. Right? I think Fury is a dominant, a dominant champion. Right? Who, because of past problems and inability to have the rematch against Vladimir Klitschko and because of the way he looks. Let's face it, he doesn't look out of central casting. He, he has a look that's kind of like Larry Holmes. Right? He's a big man, but he looks like he has a little bit of a belly. His chest doesn't leap off his body. We don't understand the stamina. We don't understand the athleticism. This is like a tall NFL offensive lineman who is more agile than guys who look straight out of central casting. So, I don't know what the odds are on a Fury Joshua fight. Here's what I do know, though. When that fight's announced, I'm betting big on Tyson Fury. I'll hedge the play with Joshua by KO because I have to respect Joshua's power, just like any Fury bet against Wilder has to involve consideration of Wilder by KO. Right? Maybe the maybe the over-under will allow you to structure the bet so you win on both sides. In other words, Fury to win, hedged with the over, whatever the over is. Right? Because your assumption has to be Fury's legs are going to baffle Joshua just like they baffled Wilder the first time around, just like they baffled Klitschko in their lone fight. Right? So, this video has a comment section. If you're an Anthony Joshua supporter and you believe that this guy is the present and future. And I understand he has one loss to Andy Ruiz. I understand he's beaten the reigning heavyweight champion, right, Joseph Parker, in addition to obviously winning his title against Charles Martin. And he's beaten the former heavyweight champion of years, Vladimir Klitschko, and he's beaten the guy who arguably is the highest rated guy without a belt. Dylan White. Right? I get all that. If you feel that he's the future, that he's the one who has been avoided, right? That these stories of Tyson Fury trying to get a fight with Anthony Joshua on his comeback and then having to go face Deontay Wilder. Right? If you believe those stories are false, if you believe that Wilder, in an advertising gimmick, started mentioning fighting Joshua in the United Kingdom just to get his name in the paper, that he wasn't serious about doing so. If you want to tell us about those storylines, please feel free to do so in the comments section of this video. Let me just say this. And I know the judges disagree with me, and that's fine. I want folks to revisit the Prevetkin film. Right? Score the first part of the fight yourself. Joshua wins the fight. He does so by KO. But in the comment section, just tell me whether you thought Joshua was having problems with Prevetkin's movement. I thought at one point, Prevetkin hits Joshua in the mouth, moves away. I thought Joshua was helpless 
understand Joshua really can't bend at the waist. Something that Fury can do in his sleep. Joshua's not the kind of guy who stands next to you and has his head naturally out of the way. He's not Vitaly Klitschko. He's not a guy who can engage you, but yet who has a natural lean. So while the punches are flying, he's leaning back. He's hard to reach, even against great boxers like Lennox Lewis. Right? In Joshua, I think you have a young guy who's learning the sport, and I know he's around 30 now, but you have a young guy who's learning the sport who's a bit robotic, who hasn't had to be fluid at this stage of his career. Now, I view Fury as a different person. I view Fury like I view LeBron James. That's another guy, right? LeBron, if you look at LeBron's history, this was a big guy, right? LeBron is 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, but yet, for some odd reason, right, when he's in grade school, when he's in high school, LeBron James felt a need to learn every position on the basketball court. So LeBron, the forward, actually has guard skills. This shortened NBA season, LeBron is actually leading the league in assists. Has anyone figured that one out? Right, LeBron, who has guard skills, actually learns back to the basket skills. Right, now I believe Jordan is the best player I've seen. But LeBron's had some years where he's had a very good three-point shooting percentage. Right? Take Terrence Crawford. Understand how Crawford ends up with Bob Arum. Mikey Garcia, who fought Crawford as an amateur. Yes, that Mikey Garcia. According to folklore, basically says to Bob Arum, yeah, you, you need to go get this guy. Right? Terrence Crawford can outbox most people right-handed. What's he doing learning how to fight Southpaw? Then you look at Terrence Crawford, he's a different person every fight. Now here you have a 6'9 heavyweight, 6'9, a guy who can bully most people. What causes a 6'9 guy to develop feet that are the best in the heavyweight division? What drove Tyson Fury to learn a left hand? Folks, there are fights out there where Tyson Fury's left-handed the majority of the fight. Right, understand, to get to where this guy is, just like with LeBron, at a young age, the guy had to have a desire and an understanding of the sport that most don't have. Right now, Anthony Joshua does what he does very well. He just doesn't do as much as Tyson Fury. Let me say this too. Fury has a learning curve. Right? The first fight, he's a little bit reckless in dealing with Deontay Wilder's right hand. The second fight, you'll notice when Wilder throws right hands, You'll notice Fury put up his left hand to make sure the spacing's right for him. Look at the film. Right? Wilder starts throwing a right hand. You'll notice Fury's left hand comes up to make sure the spacing's right. You'll notice Fury's prepared for practically every right hand Wilder throws. Then you'll notice Fury, when he gets Wilder up at the ropes, folks, that's the end of the fight. Also, there's a period between punches where the masters know how to lean on you. Right? George Foreman is exhibit number one. Right? Look at Foreman. You'll notice he leans on the back of your head. He has you in headlocks. He's pushing you around the ring. Folks, look at how Fury's manhandling Deontay Wilder between punches. 
Fury even knows how to fight dirty. I don't think Joshua does. So to me, we have a legitimate heavyweight champion. There's only one. Bro, all these belts. All these belts. You go down the street and you say, who's the heavyweight champion of the world? And I'm just telling you. Many, many, many people today are going to say Tyson Fury. I think Fury beats Joshua. That's how I see it. I've said so here online before. Right? I think Joshua is a very good fighter. Right? I think Fury is a historical fighter. Right? I wouldn't be surprised, not in the slightest, if Fury takes Joshua out. After all, wasn't Joshua down against against uh, Klitschko? Wasn't he down against Andy Ruiz? How well did he recover against Andy Ruiz? Right? If Tyson Fury knocks down Joshua like Klitschko did, just understand, Klitschko, much better at spacing, much more length, excuse me, Fury, much better at spacing, much more length, much more versatility than Vladimir Klitschko, right? If he drops Joshua and Joshua gets off the canvas, I'm just telling you, Joshua won't be able to find Fury. Fury would be able to go over to the ropes. He could throw a long right hand. He could throw long left hands. Again, you're dealing with an ambidextrous fighter. Also understand, Vitaly Klitschko thought that Joshua was too muscle-bound. Thought that his muscles would tire and fail him later in the fight. In my opinion, his muscles will tire and fail him against Tyson Fury because Fury is a guy who requires his opponent to react and move a lot and that's the kind of thing that tires an opponent right I'm not buying that Deontay Wilder in the rematch came in the ring with tired legs because of a costume I think he was baffled by Fury I think he couldn't get the timing I think he understood that coming in the ring with a straight right hand and an attitude wasn't enough against an elite skilled fighter. I like Fury over Joshua. I'll try to hedge the play so I take into consideration the chance of Joshua landing a lucky punch. That's how I see it. Let me say this too. Fury's a lot like Ali in the 60s. Understand. Just like when Sonny Liston came forward on Ali, right, in the first fight, I'm not even talking about the phantom punch fight, only to get hit with a diet of punches. Let's say Joshua shows up in the side, he is going to be aggressive. Understand, Fury's back foot is so advanced that Fury might allow Joshua to be aggressive. Knowing that on his back foot, he can walk Joshua into shots. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I look forward to your comments. Thanks for stopping by.